For over 50 years, I have worked in the motion picture industry as a special makeup effects artist doing creatures and monsters, and I built models and miniatures for films, such as this beautiful Enterprise here that's all scratch built. And a lot of the masks are representative behind me of some of the things I did uh, in the TV shows and movies. In fact, even the sightings mask, which you can probably see behind me. And in all that time, working in the industry, I had experiences with UFOs. And it wasn't until later, when I read a certain book, that I knew I was having much more than that. I never got a chance much to talk to you about the movie, but something's there, and why I made it. And of course, I made it because after my late wife passed and I met Mary, I was free to do it. So I decided to make a film, and it started with my first experience. Now, I know many of you have seen it, but did I talk about it really in detail? When I first woke up that night back in 1958, I had a hard time getting air in my lungs because I was so convinced I was in a vacuum, I had to breathe very deeply. And that was the only thing I could hear was my breath, and maybe my heartbeat. And when I looked around, I saw the lights coming in my room and they were beaming all around the ground, around my room, over my toys and everything on the floor. And I was fascinated. I wasn't scared at all. And I went and looked at it through the window I hid against the wall and I crawled against the window and I looked out and I didn't see much of anything except a dark shadow and a bunch of bright lights. And those lights knew I was there. I could tell by the way they responded. They zoomed in on me. They literally just went, oh, there he is. I was so scared I ran into my desk and I could get under my desk because I was quite small at that time. I mean, I was, what, six years old or thereabouts. and. I hid under the desk, I figured the lights couldn't get me there, but they did. They got inside the room somehow, and that was the last thing I remembered. But years and years later, when I went to Yvonne Smith, that was one of the first things we did. And we didn't get much more out of it except one thing. I could see a dark figure coming towards me, bent over, looking underneath the desk. And that was amazing, because that's the face we all know today. Several years later, my mom bought a flat that was like three or four doors away from the original house I stayed at. Now the house that we were staying at that time were flats. It was a Victorian building that had been converted into two apartments, basically very large apartments. And uh, the first one we lived on the ground floor. And this one we lived on the top floor. My mom gave me a bike. I loved that bike. I used to ride it to Golden Gate Park every day. I used to spend tons of time by myself in the park, observing nature, riding down the road, and, and looking at the reflections of the trees and the sky on the very, very polished fender of my bike. And I loved that bike. One night, I came to on my bed and I realized I left the bike outside. This really, really frightened me because I thought somebody's going to steal my bike. But I couldn't move. And I felt very lightweight and I started to raise up and I started to float right towards the ceiling. And it really felt like an out of body experience at the time, but I didn't know what that was quite yet. I rose up and up and up and up. And at this point, I'm thinking, I must be dreaming. And I go right to the ceiling and I come to the top of it and I rise up into the San Francisco night fog. I could just move my neck and I looked down and I could see my bike outside parked next to the, the building. And then I noticed this being floating with me. It was one of them. I call it a her. She grabbed my hand, she took me and we floated up into the San Francisco night fog. And as we went through it, I could see this object floating there and there was a lit doorway and we were moving towards it. Once inside the craft, or at least I assume it was a craft, I hear many times people say the craft, the spaceship, but honestly, I don't know. 
It could be that what we're seeing in the sky is some kind of portal. I mean, people describe it as a black circle. There's like a lack of light. Sometimes you see metal. A light appears in the center of it. The next thing you know, you're inside a large expanse or a huge hallway. In this case, we went down some very small hallways. And as we moved along through the hallway, I could see doors open to other rooms. And I could see people in there. Now, I know you've heard this before, but mind you, this was when I was, well, I must have been 10 years old by this point. And um, because it was a few years later after that first encounter in my bedroom. But still, I knew nothing about it. I remembered it as a dream. When we did hypnosis, more details came out. But I remember it feeling like Peter Pan, both going up with the being and coming back down, which happened later. Once on board, in the building, wherever it was, I was taken to an examination room. I can't remember if they took my pajamas off or not. I don't remember. Unfortunately, the tapes and the transcripts and my own personal notes I wrote down about these things were all lost in the flood. So I have to rely on memory. And my memory tells me that I was still clothed, maybe in my pajamas. And uh, they just looked me over and observed me. They didn't poke me or probe me. They talked to me in a very sweet manner. They seemed to care a great deal. And I was very important to them. After a while, they took me back. And they took me you know, back down the hallway. And I remember looking out a door and looking down. And I could see way down there, the roof of our uh, flat. And she took me down and she took me and they literally put me back in bed and tucked me in. Another memory I have that's quite vivid was one night I was taking out the trash on the side of my house when I was living in Granada Hills. And as I took the trash cans out to the street, through the gate on the side, and coming back, there were two small ladies. That's the best way I can describe them. That they had very Asian-like features, but very dark eyes and sort of bobbed black hair, wearing white shirts. And they looked at me and I, I said to myself, what is, who are these people? I talked to them for a second and I said, can I help you? And they spoke back to me into a language I couldn't understand. I assumed it was some sort of language that was Asian. So knowing that I had Asian neighbors, I said, are you sure you have the right house? And they started talking more towards me and they kept gesturing at me and they, one of them gestured towards the sky and I got nervous. And so I kind of left them, took the trash cans, put back in the side of the building and uh, walked into the back of my uh, shop. I had a door to that alley on the side of my house and, and went into my workshop. And I went in and as I looked back, I just had this feeling. And I looked over and I saw this soft blue light. It was thick, it just came down like right in front of my door. And I looked at it and I just, I don't know what compelled me to do it, but I just felt compelled to go stand in it. So I, so I stood in the light and the minute I did, I just felt my whole body go limp and I felt just weightless. I started to float up and I floated up towards this thing that looked kind of like a car uh, hovering over, over the house near this big tree. In, the, in my backyard and they pulled me up into that and once inside it was kind of dark and there were seats and they sat me down in a seat and I remember going up. I remember this sort of feeling of, of floating. It wasn't like a lot of inertia or a lot of g-forces but I just felt this sensation. The next thing I remember because I just don't remember what happened between the two points is that I came to and I was sitting on the edge of a table and I was fully clothed and 
the being said, we're all done with you now. Would you like to walk around? Would you like to go look out a window into space? We know you love to do that. They, they actually said that they knew I loved to look at the stars, and I, and I did, and I still do. And they took me to a window, and I stood there for the longest time, and I looked out, and I could just see the Earth down below. It was amazing. I mean, I always wanted to be in space, and there I was, and I could see it. And I just stood there mesmerized. And as I looked, you know, it was a window, I'm assuming. But it was, it, maybe it was a screen, but it was so clear, it looked like a window, and it felt like glass. And I, I looked down like this, and um, I could see some of the side of the structure of the, of the crap that I was in, and it was enormous. Um, and then they came after a while and said, okay, it's time to go back now. And after a while, they came and they got me. Now I remember that the room was kind of dark. I thought the whole thing was kind of low lit and I really don't remember a lot of detail. The room they had me in was, was pretty large and it wasn't an examination room. It was just like maybe an observation room. I don't know. But they led me back and they took me back down the hallways and they put me into this sort of car shape. Maybe it was one of the cigar shaped type of craft that were very metallic and little windows on the side. Because um, I can remember once they put me inside of it and they sat me in the back. This time I was behind slightly the pilot. There were two seats in front of me and I remember you could see out the front. I, it was either a screen or it was windows and there was something that looked like a big trackball and one of the one of the, the drivers I couldn't make them out they were sitting with their back to me I'm assuming they were gray like or maybe they weren't and had its hand on the ball um, I had a window next to me and I could look out and as I looked out I see like kind of like like we're going down a hallway or a tube or something and it was going by like this and we came out and we were in space and we were over the earth and I could see this enormous craft that we left um, and I was surprised because it had a lot of detail to it. It almost looked like something out of Close Encounters. Um, and then they took us back down and put me back. It was amazing. It's always amazing. If this was a dream, how come I can remember it in such detail all these years later? And I talked to Judy about this a great deal. We both wondered about that. In fact, many people had these experiences I've talked to about this, and they said, if it was a dream, how come I can remember back to the time when I was a kid? You never forget these dreams. They took me back they put me back in my shop, and I came to on my couch. And the door was still open. And it was really cold in there, I remember that. And I had my flight jacket on. In fact, when I went out to take the trash out, I had it on. And it was still on, and it made me feel very comforted and secure, and it was cold. And I remember I closed the door, and I could remember everything. And I wondered, had I fallen asleep on the couch, and I just dreamed this, or was it real? I've had a lot of time to think about this, and I can tell you, it was real. One time, when I was under hypnosis, and Yvonne was talking me through the session, we came towards the end. And at the end, she would normally take you back to your safe place, and then she'd gradually wake you up. And then it always usually ended with one, two, three, wide awake. So we were at that point where she was doing the one, two, three thing, but I wasn't waking up. And all I could see was black. And suddenly, in this blackness, a face came forward. And I could just make her out, maybe roughly from waist up. It was the tall white being that I had been dealing with all my life, with the big wraparound black eyes, 
the one that's in charge, the one that talks to me and says, I'm not gonna harm you, that you're important to me, you're in family and all of that. And she's looking at me and she's looking like this, like she's hearing a bond making a big deal out of it. And then she looks back at me and then she looks over again. One, two, three, Steve, wide awake, wide awake. And I could hear Yvonne getting a little, a little excited. Not too bad. She's a pretty cool cookie. And the being looks back at me. And she looks right into my eyes. She says, why do you come to this woman? Don't you know she can't help you? And then she grabs me by my neck. Not real hard. She just grabs me like this. She kind of pulls me forward into her face and she says if I don't want to let you go I never will and then suddenly she just goes she releases and she releases their hand like that like see you're free to go and she leaned back and she looked one more time at Yvonne and I woke up and I heard Yvonne saying what was going on there I said you're never going to believe this but she was here now live at, in, during this session, saying that if she didn't want to let me go, she wouldn't, that you couldn't wake me up. Until she arrogantly said, go. That was amazing, and that's all on tape. And unfortunately, because of the flood, it was lost. <laughs>